Hello, my name is Jack Penner and I'm an internal medicine resident at UCSF. I'm excited to get to talk with you today about an approach to altered mental status as part of our five minute hospitalist project. Our objective today is to outline a systematic approach to altered mental status using the different categories of disease as well as the tempo of the patient's presentation to prioritize our differential. One helpful mnemonic when approaching a patient with altered mental status is MIST, where each letter of the word MIST stands for a different category of disease. The M stands for metabolic, the I for infections, the S for structural, and the T for toxins. Within the metabolic category, we can have electrolyte abnormalities and organ dysfunction as causes of altered mental status. You can see a BMP lab skeleton here that notes which electrolyte abnormalities can lead to an encephalopathy. These include hyper and hyponatremia, an elevated BUN or creatinine level, hyper or hypoglycemia, as well as hypercalcemia. Organ dysfunctions can include the lungs, such as in hypercarbic or hypoxic respiratory failure, the liver, such as in cirrhosis, leading to hepatic encephalopathy, renal failure, as well as endocrinopathies, such as hyper or hypothyroidism. One other endocrine disorder to keep in the back of your head is issues with the adrenal glands, such as adrenal insufficiency or states of glucocorticoid excess, such as Cushing syndrome. Within the infectious category, we can think about infections outside of the CNS, like pneumonias, urinary tract infections, or intra-abdominal infections, as well as those within the CNS, like an encephalitis or a meningoencephalitis. Structural causes of altered mental status include subdural hemorrhages, PRESS, also known as posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, and venous sinus thrombosis. You may be asking yourself, why isn't stroke on this list? And the reason is that it's relatively uncommon for a stroke to present with altered mental status alone. Certainly if a patient presents altered with a localizing neurologic deficit, like left arm weakness, stroke should come to the top of our list of our differential. However, there are some strokes that can cause altered mental status alone, which we'll talk about later, but it's a relatively uncommon presentation for an acute stroke. Moving on to toxins, we can think about toxins that are in excess, such as anticholinergic toxicity, opioid overdose, ketamine use, or baclofen toxicity, as well as withdrawal states, including alcohol withdrawal, baclofen withdrawal, or when a patient's washing out from using methamphetamine. Now, let's say you go through this entire list of the missed mnemonic, and you still can't find an underlying cause of a patient's encephalopathy. In this situation, I default to a missed negative approach. And the first step in a missed negative approach is to go back and go through missed again. I can't tell you how many times I've overlooked an elevated calcium on a patient's admission BMP or not realized from their medication list that they were taking one of those medications that we listed like baclofen at home. If your missed evaluation remains negative a second time, this is where a lumbar puncture can help guide us. Specifically, we can look at the CSF pleocytosis. If we see an elevated white blood cell count on the lumbar puncture, we can think about the different meningoencephalitides, such as an infectious meningoencephalitis, an autoimmune meningoencephalitis, or a perineoplastic encephalitis. A normal white blood cell count pushes us into one of these four categories. We can think about dementia and delirium syndromes, like the rapidly progressive dementias, including prion disease, autoimmune encephalitis, or a CNS and vasculitis, as well as neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or vascular dementia. And these can come with or without delirium and still lead to altered mental status. Psychiatric diseases include catatonia. And now to touch on those special strokes that we mentioned earlier that can present with an isolated change in mental status. These include brainstem strokes, thalamic strokes, non-dominant parietal lobe strokes, as well as frontal lobe strokes. And then lastly, we can think about seizures. It's relatively common to see altered mental status that comes after a seizure. And in these situations, we'll see an encephalopathy that develops after stereotypic seizure movements. However, patients can have altered mental status without these stereotypic seizure movements during non-convulsive status. 
And non-convulsive status can be due to a primary seizure disorder like epilepsy. It can be due to anything that causes in inflammation in the brain, like an infection, an autoimmune encephalitis, or a perineoplastic encephalitis. And a number of medications can cause non-convulsive status, including beta-lactame antibiotics like cefepime or immunosuppressive agents like cyclosporine and tacrolimus. Finally, the tempo of the patient's presentation can be an incredibly helpful factor to help us think about which diseases we need to consider first. I'm gonna give you two clinical scenarios here, and I want you to note how different our instinctual differentials are based on the tempo of the patient's presentation. Imagine seeing a 48-year-old woman who has abrupt onset altered mental status that developed two hours ago. Compare that to the same 48-year-old woman who has had progressive changes in her cognition over the last eight weeks. Our differentials are totally different in those two scenarios, and this is because the tempo of disease is a key factor when thinking about altered mental status. If you remember only one thing from this slide, remember that the longer altered mental status has been around, the more likely it is to be due to a problem with the brain itself. Hyperacute causes of altered mental status can include things like hypoglycemia and opiate overdose. However, there are some intrinsic causes of hyperacute changes in altered mental status that develops over seconds or hours, and these are life-threatening issues like stroke or an intraparenchymal hemorrhage. When we get into altered mental status that develops over a number of days, this is where that missed mnemonic from the beginning really comes into play. When we get into a subacute time course over weeks and months, we can think about the rapidly progressive dementias listed here, as well as a subacute meningoencephalitis, which can include infections like tuberculosis or fungal infections, as well as, as, well as non-infectious diseases like sarcoid or leptomeningeal carcinomatosis. And finally, when we're getting into the time course of years and decades, this is where we have primary dementia syndromes such as Alzheimer's, vascular dementia, and Parkinsonian disease. Finally, I wanna give a huge thank you to the clinical problem solvers for teaching me this approach to altered mental status, as well as giving me these different schemas that we can use here. You can follow the clinical problem solvers on Twitter, at CP Solvers, or check out their website, www.clinicalproblemsolving.com, for more of these types of schemas and approaches to other diseases. And lastly, I just want to give a huge thank you and send all of my support to everybody who's battling COVID on the front lines across the country. We are thinking about you all the time. We're sending you as much love and support as we possibly can. And we just thank you for all of the work you're doing. You inspire us each and every day. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.